afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. We're just a few minutes away from three o'clock, so we look forward to getting started at that time. Good afternoon, everyone. It's three o'clock now, so we'll look to get started with today's webinar. Thank you so much for joining us. As you uh, can see, today's webinar is called Teaching Tomorrow's Workforce as or Teaching Tomorrow's Workforce, I'm sorry. And this is part of our What Works webinar series. Uh, my name is Michelle Carr, and I'm joined by my colleague Tash Lynn Teske, and we will be your hosts for the webinar this afternoon. We are here today to help further equip you for the important role that you have each day, teaching our future workforce. In a world of ever-changing and growing careers, this is an exciting task and one that shouldn't be taken lightly. That said, we understand the workload that you already have, the curriculum expectations that you need to meet, the unique needs of each of your students, the extracurricular activities, and the everyday unexpected tasks that come with teaching a room full of students. Knowing this, we have created resources that we hope can be seamlessly incorporated into your everyday teaching environment by formally including elements in, to lesson plans to casually having discussions with students on a sports field or a band trip. We believe that opportunities for learning can be found everywhere around us, especially when it comes to learning about one's skill sets and how they can be used meaningfully in our local workforce. So through our time today, we hope to cover the following topics. We'll take a look at 
our local population. We'll discuss local promising sectors and industry trends. So what are those in-demand jobs? We'll take a look at the job demand report in the labor force survey, in addition to information on wages. We'll also go over some of the skills that employers are looking for. We'll touch on the importance of experiential learning. And then throughout this webinar, we'll be sharing numerous Workforce Windsor Essex resources that will be valuable to you as an educator and to your students. For the first part of this webinar, we will we'll be using a slideshow, while the second part of the webinar will involve navigating and using the tools on our website, which we'll be able to walk through uh, through the screen that you have in front of you. We have a lot of information to cover in a short amount of time, so we will try to keep this webinar moving at a fairly good pace. That said, if you do have any questions at any time, please feel free to use the question and discussion box that's on the right hand side of your screen. You'll also notice that there is a handout section near the discussion box. These handouts will be referred to during the webinar and we've included them so that you can download them easily. You'll notice that one of the handouts includes all of the links that we are referring to throughout the webinar. If you have colleagues or staff who would benefit from this webinar, then know that we will be posting a, web a recording of the webinar on our website. So that will be available for view following this record, this live webinar. So without further ado, uh, let's jump into today's session. So to start off, you may, be, may or may not be familiar with who Workforce Windsor Essex is or what we do. So Workforce Windsor Essex serves the Windsor Essex region as the local employment planning council. So our mandate is to plan, facilitate, and advocate for regional workforce development. Essentially what this means is that we collect information on trends in the labor market and share our findings and resources to help employers, job seekers, educators, and community organizations be more aware of what's happening and in turn be more successful. We'll start our slides off today with a brief overview of information about our region that may be of interest to you. So this will be a fairly data heavy section um, part to the webinar, but after that, uh, we'll move away from some of the uh, data itself. So this information will help to add some further perspective to the overall discussion that we're having. Firstly, let's take a look at our population. You should be able to see a graph um, on your screen there. And you can see that from 2011 to 2016, the population of Windsor-Essex has changed in size as well as in age distribution. The population of Windsor-Essex grew from 388,782 to 398,953 people, which indicates a 2.6% change in population and an increase of 10,171 people. Windsor-Essex has an aging population. Age groups over the age of 55 saw the greatest percentage increases in their groups between 2011 and 2016, with ages 65 to 74 experiencing the largest increase of 26.3%. This is likely due to an influx of retirees from outside of our area. The prime working age population of 25 to 54 saw an average decrease in population by 3%. Now let's take a look at our household income. In 2010, the median after-tax household income in Windsor-Essex was $52,855. This grew to $59,274 in 2015. So while this paints a picture of much of the Windsor-Essex population living middle-class lifestyles, the reality is different when considering households with children in the Windsor CMA. As you'll see on your screen, the Windsor CMA includes Windsor, Tecumseh, Lakeshore, Amherstburg, and LaSalle. Statistics Canada found that the Windsor CMA has the highest rate of children living in low-income households in Canada, with 24% of children living in a low-income household. Persons in a household of four had low income if the household's after-tax income was under $44,266. Additionally, in November 2017, the number of people collecting disability support payments reached 12,900, which the City of Windsor believed was an all-time high. We can also take a look at our region's educational attainment. Overall, the population of Windsor-Essex has a range of educational attainment. 40% of those in our region aged 25 to 64 have a secondary school diploma or less 
well, 7% have an apprenticeship or trade certificate or diploma, and 52% have a college or university level education. Windsor-Essex has a lower level of education, educational attainment than the Ontario average. There can be a negative effect of 40% of the working age population having only a high school diploma or less, as employers may find it harder to fill skilled positions, and this population may find it more challenging to find stable, fairly paid employment. One in four people in Windsor, Essex is an immigrant, which refers to a person who is or has ever been a landed immigrant or a permanent resident. A total of 85,810 people in Windsor, Essex are immigrants. Of these immigrants, 10,800 are newcomers who settled in Windsor, Essex between 2011 and 2016. A newcomer is an immigrant who has been here for five years or less. Considering the population in Windsor, Essex increased by 10,171 people between 2011 and 2016, Windsor, Essex might have otherwise had a decrease in population without the arrival of newcomers. Immigrants are well-educated, with 70% possessing a minimum of a high school diploma and 47% possessing a post-secondary education. Between 2011 and 2016, Windsor-Essex saw a net migration of 4,144 people. However, there was a net out-migration of the working age population, aged 18 to 44, of minus 1,283 people. These are individuals who are likely looking for employment opportunities elsewhere. Positively, the net migration of young people aged 0 to 17 was very high at 3,225 migrants, which if these young people can be retained in the community will help provide an available labor force in the future. Furthermore, the scale of movement is notable as close to 100,000 people moved in or out of Windsor, Essex during the five year period. From 2014 to 2015, the top regions for net migration into Win Windsor, Essex were Foreign, Peel, Brant, Durham, Joliet. From 2014 to 2015, the top region for net migration out of Windsor, Essex were Middlesex, Vancouver, Edmonton, Ottawa, and Calgary. As seen above, the majority of those who migrate into Windsor, Essex are from outside of Canada. So as we've gone through all of these numbers and all of this data, you may have been able to connect the dots on how this information relates to your role. As an educator, you may be educating students from low-income families. The support that you provide them may help them in breaking the cycle of poverty. You may be teaching students who are new to Canada, and your support for them will help them to acquire the education and skills that are needed for them to one day enter the workforce successfully. As a region, we want to see young talent staying in our area. You have the opportunity to expose your students to the amazing work that is being done in our region to encourage them to stay local long term. You may be teaching students from families where the highest level of education has traditionally been high school, and your student will be the first one to pursue education or training outside of the high school learning environment. Our hope is that the information we equip you with today can help you in doing all of the above. We know it's no small feat, which is why we're here today having this webinar in hopes that it can help you along the way. Oftentimes, we're approached by people with inquiries related to in-demand jobs. What are the promising sectors and what industries are currently hiring? So we have a list there of promising sectors on your screen. As you can see, it includes construction, professional scientific and technical services, healthcare and social assistance, manufacturing, repair and maintenance, and education. So we're going to take a few moments to go through each of these sectors. And these are sectors that we take some time to review each year to make sure that we are keeping them as up to date as possible. So the first sector is construction. So as you can see on the screen, there's almost 8,000 people in Windsor, Essex working in this sector right now. As you may know, we have a few large construction projects coming our way, including the Gordie Howe International Bridge and the Mega Hospital and eventually a high-speed rail. For the first project, the bridge, there will be specific roles required, such as iron workers and heavy equipment operators, as well as numerous additional roles that will be required for the, for the full infrastructure needs, such as carpenters for building toll booths or plumbers, plumbers and HVAC workers to complete the customs offices. 
Um, so as I said, there's 8,000 people working right now in this sector, but that is expected to grow greatly once these projects are started. It is also important to keep in mind that those working on the bridge project will likely have the skills and experience to work on the mega hospital as well. So right now is a good time to enter this sector because of the consistent work that is expected. Um, so some of those jobs expecting growth are construction trades laborers, heavy equipment operators, electricians, carpenters, and iron workers, all of which would be needed for the first bridge project. Um, so if you are more interested in learn, if you are interested in learning more about this sector or if you have any students that are interested in the sector, we would advise that they look at our Help Bridge Your City resources, which provide an overview of the occupations that will be needed for the Gordie Howe International, International Bridge project. So this resources, resource is included in the handout section um, on the right side of your screen as well. It is available in French on our website. All the resources on our website are free as well. Great. The next sector that we'll take a look at is professional scientific and technical services. A large part of this sector is the technology industry, which can involve anything from mobile app development to software development to social media or graphic design. It is an ever-changing sector with new jobs, such as a social media writer, popping up all the time. We have a number of larger and smaller firms involved in tech in our region, and many community members are employed across the border in the sector as well. As a Fun fact, we have over 6,000 people from our community who commute or work in the states. And so that is something that is very unique to our area. And this is certainly one of the sectors that we see a lot of those people working in. It is important to keep in mind that though tech workers um, don't or sorry, it's important to keep in mind though that tech workers don't just work in the technology industry, they work in all sectors. Every other industry uses tech devices, such as electronic cash registers in stores and restaurants, automated equipment on auto assembly lines, or robots in the operating room. While tech workers may not be the person operating each of these machines, they may be responsible for designing the machine or providing maintenance if necessary. The sector does not only include tech workers though, it also includes jobs like engineers, lawyers, and architects. So you can see that there's just over 4,000 people working in this sector in our community. And the top five occupations that are expecting growth include mechanical engineers, information systems analysts, biological engineers, paralegals, and computer programmers and interactive media developers. Now, if your students have an interest in this sector, then we would advise that they check out the Windsor-Essex Tech Sector section of our website. So this part of our website will, in the near future, um, contain a tech report and a bulletin, which we are just getting ready to release in the upcoming months. There's also information on networking opportunities. We have videos of local companies and additional information on learning about tech. So our next sector is healthcare and social assistance. This sector is currently experiencing what is known as a silver tsunami, which will have us witnessing an increase in retirements in certain occupations, as well as increased demand for healthcare services. So when most people think of this sector, they first think of doctors and nurses. However, there are many behind the scenes jobs that are involved in this sector as well, including maintenance, counseling, and culinary positions. With the increase in needed support for our aging population and those requiring mental health services, there's also a need for support workers such as social workers, counselors, and home care providers um, that are increasing. So right now there are over 20,000 people in Windsor Essex working in this sector, which is one of our largest sectors. And the top five occupations expecting growth are registered nurses, nurse aides, food counter attendants and kitchen helpers, social and community service workers, and nursing coordinators and supervisors. Actually, Teshlin, while we're on healthcare and social assistance, would you be able to talk about Take a Walk in My Shoes and the opportunity for students there? Sure, so Take a Walk in My Shoes is an event that we partner with Windsor Regional Hospital on. Um, our next upcoming date is May 29th. So for this day, we take students that are in the Health and Wellness Specialized High Schools major program, and we take them through rotations of about eight departments in the hospital. So they get to look at um, the main ones they're really exciting about, excited about is family birthing and the operating room. So they get to see some of the tools that are worked in there, kind of um, what processes happen when people are in those rooms. Um, but they also learn about things that are 
um, like I said, behind the scenes. So going into the sanitization department. So looking at um, what happens when these all the medical tools are returned um, after they're being used and how they get shipped out again. Um, looking at all the different types of ultrasound and x-ray technicians and what they do, um, as well as different engineers that are available, especially those um, working to standardize the processes, um, which is really important when Windsor Regional merged with Hotel Dew. So there are currently a few spots left. So if you have any students that you think would be interested in that, feel free um, to send us an email. And we'll send out the permission form. There was a few of the Workforce Windsor Essex staff that were able to take part in this event. We also did it last month. And it was just incredible to see all of these students seeing the behind the scenes jobs that are being done and hearing from the staff and that works there. I know the group that I was with was an all girl group and they were really excited about the family birthing unit and they had the opportunity to put gloves on and touch a placenta and they were asking all of these questions about it and they just thought it was the greatest thing since sliced bread. And so it was really great to see their enthusiasm and their excitement for all of these students who have a keen interest in um, being employed in the sector one day. So the next sector that we'll take a look at is manufacturing. Students often feel as though manufacturing is dark, dirty, dangerous, and they really just don't want to go there. That's why each October, we take hundreds of students out to tour local manufacturing companies to learn more about what manufacturing actually is. These students discover that robotics and technology have really changed what manufacturing looks like and the types of jobs that are associated with it. They also discover that manufacturing is not limited to the automotive world. In fact, our favorite example of this comes from a local company called Radix Inc. that is known for creating a system of lasers that is used to do quality control of gummy bears. As you can see from the number on the slide there, just well, 30,685. And this is by far one of the largest sectors that, well, this is the largest sector that we'll talk about in our time today. So it does have a huge impact on our region. You can see the top five occupations expecting growth include laborers in metal fabrication, machining tool operators, industrial engineering and manufacturing technologists and technicians, plastic products assemblers, finishers and inspectors, and metal products machine operators. If you have a group of students that's interested in taking part in Manufacturing Day, usually it happens the first Friday of every October, and we are certainly looking forward to um, being part of that again this year, then feel free to get in touch with us. You can, we'll have our contact information on the last slide. You can send us an email or give us a call so that we can make sure that you can take part in this exciting day. So we live in a car driven area, which is exemplified by our large manufacturing industry. So there will always be a need for repairs, particularly a high demand for truck and trailer repair. While most mechanics specialize in small auto automobiles, there's a huge need for those that are trained and certified to work with large tractor trailers and heavy equipment, such as tractors. With these mechanics, the transportation and agriculture industries can suffer simply due to a lack Sorry, without these mechanics, the transportation and agriculture industries can suffer simply due to a lack of working equipment. Um, in addition, specialized cleaners are also in demand. So if you think about the inside of your car, imagine the inside of a large tractor trailer and the materials that they are carrying, um, some of which is hazardous materials, food, seeds, anything like that that's going across the border. So these trailers need to be cleaned before carrying anything new. So there are over 2,000 people right now working in this industry and the occupations expecting growth are welding, auto service technicians, truck and bus mechanics and mechanical repairs, specialized cleaners, laborers in metal fabrication and contractors and supervisors of these mechanic trades. The next sector that we'll take a look at is one that you're all very familiar with. <laughs> education. So this is a sector that has come onto the promising sectors list, has gone off of it, has come on it over the last few years. So we certainly see um, a lot of change, I guess, within that in its role on this list. But we are here to talk about that for today. And so as you may know, retirements in the sector and an increase in our population due to immigration is driving up enrollment in the sector. And French does continue to be an in-demand um, part of the sector. Now, as I'm sure you know, there are many roles to consider when we look at the world of education. And as you can see there from the top five occupations expecting growth, there's jobs like elementary and secondary school teaching assistants, um, post-secondary teaching and research assistants, 
secondary and elementary school teachers and educational counselors, janitors, caretakers, and building superintendents, and then elementary school and kindergarten teachers. One final area that we always love to touch on is entrepreneurship, which is owning your own business. Our region, in our region, there is a large proportion of small businesses and we have many supports that are available to help them, including supports for students that are still in school. So you may recognize some of the entrepreneurs on the slide that you have in front of you. These are all local entrepreneurs. So you may be familiar with Andrew Banner, who has Group Hug Apparel. He was recently awarded, I believe, one of the top 40 under 40. Uh, John O. Foods is in the middle there. Uh, Radix Inc. is off to the side, so I guess the top right-hand side. The bottom left is Urban Surf, which we've been to as a team before for a team building activity. So lots of fun to be had there. I know there's some schools that take field trips there as well. In the middle is Nature Fresh Foods, and then off to the bottom right is Centerline, which is a manufacturing company in our region. So when we look at supports that are available for students, um, one of the ones that always comes to our mind is Summer Company. And Summer Company is run through the Small Business, business Center, and it gives students the opportunity to run their own business throughout the summer. Uh, students need to submit a business proposal in the spring, so I believe that's right around now. And if they are approved, then they get up to $3,000 to run their company. So I believe they receive up to $1,500 to start off their company. Then they receive the remainder of whatever that might look like towards the end of the summer. And there are some really diverse employment opportunities that students have been able to come up with through this. I remember when I first heard about Summer Company a few years ago now, I was like, oh, well, what type of businesses are students owning for the summer? But then I very quickly found out that there is a wide range of them. So just from this list, um, you can see that the first one there is a gentleman who does cleaning services for boats, which is something I never would have thought of. <laughs> uh, Sip de Soleil was a smoothie company, and I believe um, she was set up in Bell River near the beach area. Page by Page Productions is a photography, um, and I believe videography business. Art by Madison, that one's fairly self-explanatory. She is an artist. There's elite yard work, so someone who's doing yard work for the summer. So if you have a student who is going to be cutting people's grass anyways throughout the summer, why not have them bring it to the next level in trying to own their own business through summer company? And then Victoria Railing is a gentleman who works on doing railing for people's homes. So there are many different opportunities. Um, it's something that you can check out through their website, or if you want us to connect you with them, we can do that as well. But it's a really great opportunity for students, and many of these companies are able to continue on long past the summer. Uh, these young entrepreneurs are able to be mentored by successful entrepreneurs in our community as they go through this process, and they're able to take part in um, entrepreneurship type events or areas where they can have booths set up to let other people know about their companies. So now that we've done sort of a broader sector-based overview of what sectors are in demand, we can go through um, and look at more specific um, list of the in-demand jobs. So one of our more recent projects is our top 76 in-demand jobs list. So after meeting with employers and discussing the jobs that they are consistently in need of and by scanning through online job postings, we created a list of the top in-demand jobs. So as you can see on our website, um, you'll see the full list of all of these jobs. Um, right now they're signified by their NOT code, which is their occupation code. Um, and we have the full list there with our career profiles. So if you, um, See there, um, 6311, our food su service supervisor. Um, so you may have a student that has a career goal of becoming a restaurant manager, um, but they may not have any experience. This is a good way to sort of go through and see um, and learn a lot about what would go into this job. So you'll see there's a job description there at the top. Um, local wage and salary information, so what the most commonly uh, provided wage for that job is, um, the most commonly listed skills in the job postings, um, daily job duties, the working conditions, and the career pathways. 
um, as well as any local training um, or education um, that would be offered. So if you look at the career pathway map there, um, you'll see this is um, for the tourism and hospitality sector. So as you can see, um, restaurant managers in the middle there, we'll circle that for you. Perfect. Um, so someone who has never been in um, this sector, perhaps if maybe they've never had a job yet, um, this is sort of a lofty goal for them looking at now. So this map will show them basically, where do I start if I've never been in this sector? So if you sort of follow the arrows backwards, it'll lead you to dishwasher or even food counter attendant. So those are great um, first jobs or stepping stones toward your goal uh, or toward their goal of being a restaurant manager. Um, this may even be good for someone who maybe has already done catering or um, has done um, chef work, but doesn't know how to then make it to a manager role. So maybe they're partway through their career journey already and they just kind of follow the arrows and see what their options are on how to get to that manager position. So all of the jobs included here are from different sectors, um, including agriculture, construction, manufacturing, information and communication technology, finance and retail, service, tourism and hospitality, healthcare and transportation. So something else that's really cool for um, students to go through are our workforce profile blogs. So one that we have here is for a chef. So all of these blogs um, are associated with a career profile. So if you look at this first blog here, you'll see that it kind of just gives an overview of what this job looks like. So this is a chef from Bread's Meat Spread, which is located downtown. So these are all local workers. Um, and this blog just kind of goes through how he got interested in cooking. Um, showing off the lovely sandwiches, <laughs> those make me hungry. Um, how he um, got interested, what his day-to-day -day job looks like, what education um, path he chose, and what advice he has for someone else looking to become a chef. So these are great opportunities for students if they want to learn more about these jobs, see what the actual workplace setting looks like. Um, and we have these profiles for almost all of our 76 um, in-demand jobs and they're located right beside the profile. So this is a great opportunity for students to sort of learn more about what's happening in our community. So in addition to these, um, you'll wanna stay tuned for the launch of our We Explore tool, um, which is happening on April 12th on Thursday. This tool will provide a more encompassing and interactive view of all the career pathways that are shown within these profiles. So information from the career profiles, including the job description, skills, and salary information, um, will be featured on that tool as well. So that's gonna be a great way um, that students can sort of um, look at these career pathways in a more interactive way um, and learn a lot more about what is available in our local job market. Great, the next resource that we'll take a look at is WeNAF. So your students may or may not know the career path that they'd like to take one day. If you're looking for additional teaching resources that can be incorporated into your everyday lessons, we would encourage you to spend some time checking out our WeNav resource. WeNav is a free online career counseling program for youth. We developed it a few years ago through funding from the Ontario Trillium Foundation. It has been presented throughout the province and is used in many different parts of Canada. This six section curriculum covers topics such as, let's see, we have career navigation, self-knowledge, exploring careers, other relevant skills and knowledge, looking ahead, and then knowing how to create an action plan. It is a completely modifiable curriculum, meaning that materials are available in Word and fillable PDF form so that anything can be adjusted as you require for the unique group of students that you are working with. And materials can also be completed on a computer or if your classroom has access to a computer lab. So we'll walk through what these resources look like and what they include. So as you can see, this is just the introduction page. You can access the facilitator guide by clicking on the facilitator guide button there. And it gives you just an overview of some things to keep in mind. And you'll see that and there's some lessons that other people have learned who have implemented WeNav. Um, you can access the facilitator guide in English here. The EN is for English. Purple over here is for French. 
And then if we take a bit of a deeper dive into one of these sections, let's check out the self-knowledge section. That's an, I don't know if I've ever really looked at that picture before. It's very inspirational. So we have the introduction, there's some section tips, um, and then materials for facilitators. So again, the facilitator guide is included right there. And then there's also handouts for youth. So we have an all about me section. Um, so for example, you could click on this and it would bring up a PDF that students are then able to use. As I mentioned, this is something that if you have access to computer labs, they can uh, type things in. So what do I like to do in my free time? I like to read books. So students are able to type this in, save it, and then um, perhaps email it to you or however you want that to work for your classroom. Or you can print these off as handouts. Additionally, if you have a group of students that perhaps is at a different level of English or there are additional activities that you'd like to add into your lesson, you can open it, that document in Word. So there it is in Word. Excellent, we're just trying to navigate some of the behind the scenes screen technology here. Um, and you can see that you could um, change the title, you could change anything that you'd like so that you can make sure that what you're using is best suited for the students that you are working with. There's also additional resources that are included at the bottom there. So that might be links to um, other articles or videos that are related to the topic that is at hand. Additionally, you'll see here that there are, there's a whole section of additional resources. Actually, I believe this is where they're all included, or additional ones. And then there's also news for students and educators. So this is labor market information in the news. So Tash Lynn does an excellent job of keeping this up to date. As you see, we have all the way up to April 6 here. And this is different articles that relate to labor market information. So for example, is Windsor becoming a cruise destination? That's a great question. I didn't see that article. I'll have to go back and read that one. Uh, there's also the new casino that is coming to Chatham. So again, this is just a great hub for all of those articles that might be helpful for a lesson plan that you are working with. Now, a really exciting part about this about WeNav is we have a new edition that Tashlin has been working on lately, and I'll let her walk you through that. Um, so for those of you that are elementary educators, um, you may be interested in our career navigation page for elementary educators. So this page has modified WeNav resources for you to use with your students, including some curriculum connections um, with sector-based activities. So as you see here, all of our um, resources are available in both a Word and PDF version. Um, many of them are available in French as well. Um, and additionally, we have presentations at the bottom, um, including our Promising Sectors presentation. So uh, similar to the overview that we gave all of you um, previously, this is a presentation we often give to um, different classes. And now um, you can sort of go through it and adapt it if you would like, um, also available in French. We also have some um, other pieces um, like our blog on um, different learning activities that students could do during March break. So just kind of connecting um, different pieces of what's happening in the community back to how that can impact their career exploration, um, as well as all the links to our other projects that would, um, again, relate to career exploration, such as our tech sector um, hub where all of our videos are located um, and those career profiles that we previously discussed. Yeah, let's just quickly go to that tech page since we talked about that earlier when we were talking about the tech sector. So as you can see, here are those company videos that we mentioned. So there's one for AlphaCore, Alteris Group, iDream Interactive, Pareto Business Group, Red Piston, and Splice Digital. And then I think we'll also, because it's one of my favorite things, take a look at this blog posting. Our communications um, 
guru, Sarah, had the opportunity to put this together and it's just so much fun. And she goes over different ways that you can learn and play during March break. And so um, just experiential learning opportunities that can happen at home. And she includes very recent, or sorry, very local opportunities, as you can see here, um, that different students and families, or perhaps you as a class can check out. Um, there's a section there for museums. And then there's get into nature. So some outdoor activities, get cooking, get crafting. I just love the way that she set up all of these pictures. She said that these are some of the items from her childhood. She was able to take these pictures um, at her mom's house and then volunteer together as well. So some really great, um, simple, easy to use resources. Um, so previously, Michelle told you that we're, we were mostly done with the data uh, part of our presentation, but we're going to touch on it a little bit more just to give you um, some more concrete examples of how um, you can use this information and your students can use this information. So on our website, if you go to our local labor market information page, um, we have here uh, what is labor market information. So it kind of gives some great examples, um, including jobs that are available, salaries, employees, employers that are hiring or laying off, um, just some great examples of what LMI is. Um, all of these um, large blue buttons that you see here are links to different interactive reports that we've um, been able to create just sort of compiling lots of data into more of a user-friendly um, and prettier, we feel, <laughs> um, look to them. So if you select the job demand report, this is a monthly report created um, that basically just collects all the information on online job postings that were posted um, for the last month. So this is the one for March. So as you can see right there at the top, it has um, the total number of postings for this month. So in March, it was 2,752. Um, and that has been steadily increasing since December. So kind of giving you that six month um, look at where things have been. Additionally, you can find the um, list of top 10 occupations that were posted most often. So you can see there, uh, transport truck driver was posted 191 times and the median salary associated with that was $41,200. So that's a great way of seeing um, what is in demand right now this month um, and who is hiring for that. Um, additionally, a look at some of those technical skills and soft skills um, that were associated the most with all of these postings. So for technical skills, um, most often was Microsoft Office, Blueprint Reading. So while some of those like Blueprint Reading might be more specific to a certain job, um, the fact that they're posted so often shows that um, those jobs most likely in construction and manufacturing are very prevalent um, in the job market right now. Um, some of those soft skills, so oral and written communication, detail oriented, being a team player, all of these things are um, great ways to show your students um, what they should be focusing on now while they're in school preparing to enter the job force or the job market. Another one of these um, monthly base reports is our labor force survey review. Um, so this is monthly data that stats can puts out um, and it gives an overview of the unemployment rate, the labor force and the employment rate. So for the month of March, the unemployment rate was 5.2%. So as you can see, um, it sort of increased a little bit in the last couple of months, um, but we're still steadily um, staying lower than we have been in the past. So it's a good way to sort of um, show students right now that a lot of people think that our unemployment rate is sky high. Nobody's finding jobs. Um, everybody's sort of stuck where they're at, but 5% is actually very low. We've definitely um, done very well since the recession. This kind of shows that um, our job market is good. There's not a ton of competition out there right now, which is good for new students that are maybe lacking that work experience. Um, this can sort of give them the boost that they need when um, entering the workforce. So something a little more specific um, and detailed if they have an interest in a specific job, a great resource is our 2016 Windsor Essex wages. So as you can see here, we have um, basically every job that exists listed on here and it's classified by its not code or national occupation code. Um, but don't worry if you don't know what that code is for any of these jobs, you can simply search 
um, in the top there any job they're looking for. So say they're interested in being a welder. You just simply um, type that in and based on that um, occupation locally, the median wage, the major, the wage most commonly posted for that job or most commonly received is about $22 an hour. So it's a great uh, wage for someone in this field. Um, additionally, if you look at say the 10th percentile or 25th percentile of that wage, it is markedly or comparatively low, but that would be likely for someone who doesn't have any experience of simply starting out, maybe they're an apprentice at that stage, but then looking at the 90th percentile at almost $34 an hour, that's incredible for this job, but that is definitely someone who has been in the field a long time, has good experience, but that can be your student's goal. That's what they're working towards. So this is a great tool um, just to sort of give them a bit of a reality check when they're looking. Maybe they thought welder is made $10 an hour or $50 an hour. This is sort of giving them exactly what's happening right now. Great. The next resource that we'll take a look at is We Jobs. So one of our colleagues has the opportunity uh, to go through several different job boards and to be contacted by many different employers um, so that she can put together emails that are sent out to over 1,000 people in the community so they know what jobs are available right now. This is an email that goes out two to three times a week. And all of these jobs are put into a PDF and a Word document. So this is what those individuals would receive in the email. And as you can see, it has a job summary here. So this is a 90 page document. So when people say that no one is hiring in Windsor, we just like to send them these emails um, because that is a lot of jobs. And again, this is multiple of these go out a week. So as you can see, there's the job um, summary of all the jobs that are included in this specific email, but then it will also break it down into, into including the job posting information. So let's say you want to be a foot care nurse. You can see in this example um, where the location is, the type, the employment status, the number of openings, the description. So again, this is the specific job posting information. So um, this will include whatever that employer has put out. So for this company, they have a bit of a background on who they are, why you want to work for their company, the type of requirements that they're looking for. And there's also a link that is provided so that you could go to where that job posting actually is. So a lot of people that we know have been able to find employment through the WeJobs list. My husband is included in that, so I'm a huge supporter um, of WeJobs. If you are interested in signing up for this list or if you have students who are getting ready to graduate and maybe they're planning on working for a year or so or longer, then they can sign up on our website. Um, as you can see, it's just our link here, workforcewindsoressex.com slash wejobs. And you would just put your information in these boxes, first name, last name, with optional options to include your job title organization. Email is obviously an important part. And then for we jobs, you'll be signing up for, oh, doesn't, job hostings in job fairs. There we go. And then you would submit that and we'll send that over to our colleague Darlene who oversees that list. Again, another great opportunity just to show students the types of jobs that are being hired for in our community. Now, if students feel as though they need additional um, help or additional resources, then we would suggest that they check out WeSearch. And I thought I had it open, but I do not. So just one moment. There we go. So WeSearch is a wayfinding tool to help businesses, job seekers, students connect with resources and supports. And they do this by answering a few questions. Now there's a chance that you're, depending what organization, or educational institution you're with, you may have this actually on your board's website because this tool is hosted on a few different websites throughout our community. So as you can see, there's a few simple questions that users would answer. So let's say that we are a student who's looking for a new job. We would select that second option there. Not working because we're just getting ready to graduate. And there's an option here to learn more about employment insurance or Ontario Works. We'll skip that for now, but that resource is there. As students or users have the opportunities to access online help. So if you are at home in your PJs and you just wanna get help from the couch, you can do that there, or you can get in-person help as well. 
there's a few additional questions here to help determine the population that the user is from. So you could be none of the above, or you could fall into one of these. For the purposes of this example, we will be a youth or a young adult. And then you can select the type of organization that you want help from. So there's community organizations that help youth, private employment agencies, there's youth and young adult employment programs, and then there's also Employment Ontario service providers. So you can see here that there's a list of the EO service providers in our community. So we'll click on, let's say, New Beginnings, because they work very closely with youth. You can see there's access to information on the organization. You can learn more about their services by clicking this link. There's a phone number, and then there's also a map. The maps tend to zoom in quite a bit, so we'll zoom out a bit there, and you can see where their location is there on Jeanette. So again, this is just a great opportunity for um, students or even parents, community members, to get connected with the services that they need in our region. All right. So now that you're familiar with some of those different resources and tools that we have, we're going to take a few moments. I realize we have 12 minutes left. This hour has been flying by. Hopefully it's felt that way to you too, in a good way. <laughs> um, but we'll take a look at um, some of the skills that employers have told us that they are looking for. There's a few different categories of skills that we like to talk about when we discuss skills. First of all, there are technical skills. So these are advanced skills that are needed to perform a certain task. So this might include something like engineering, programming, blueprint reading, forklift driving, et cetera. There's also foundational skills, which are basic skills that you would need for a job, such as being able to read, write, and listen. There's soft skills, and these are more of the personal skills that make you a really great employee. You use many of them in high school or you learn about many of them in high school, whether or not you realize it, um, such as being able to be motivated, work on a team, solve problems, um, show respect. And then transferable skills are skills that are developed in one area and used in another. So for example, a student that is part of a band would understand the importance of listening well and working on a team. So this is a type of skill that can be used in just about any job setting. We continue to hear that the world of careers is going to look very different for um, our future generations. You may have had, or you may be in the same career that you've had for your entire life. And I know that I watched both of my parents have the same career for their working years. Um, but many studies are saying that young people may have an upwards of six to eight different careers in their lifetime. And so work will look very different for them. So transferable skills are going to be incredibly important as they look at different career options along the way. So we can narrow in and take a closer look at some of the specific skills employers have mentioned to us over time. Employers are looking for individuals who know how to manage their time. Again, we always say when we <laughs> deliver this presentation to students that your teachers are trying to teach you these things along the way. Um, so managing time, knowing how to hand assignments in and on time is an easy connection for that one. Um, it's important for um, workers to have a good attitude. So someone may not like a job that they're doing, but it's still important for them to be able to have that professional attitude. I'm sure many of you have perhaps experienced um, poor customer service for, or you know that the person that you're working with at a store just does not like their job. It really impacts the customer's experience if that worker does not have a good attitude about the type of work that they're doing. They're also looking for individuals who are willing to learn. So learning doesn't finish when you uh, finish high school or your post-secondary training or education. It really is a lifelong process, especially with the changes that we have in technology. And um, being able to speak more than one language is definitely a benefit, especially in our very culturally diverse community. They're also looking for individuals who are reliable and punctual. So you may or may not have students who show up on time ready to do their work every day, or you may have students that are coming in a few minutes late every day. We always encourage students to show up, but five to 15 minutes early, um, 15 minutes early, especially if you're going for an interview, but for a regular job, five to 15 minutes early um, so that you're ready to do work. 
and they're looking employers are also looking for individuals who can work well on a team and individually so again the importance of a group projects and um, being able to do individual projects they're looking for individuals who know how to take initiative so going above and beyond doing things that may not be asked of you they're looking for individuals who are flexible and adaptable, so going with the flow, uh, regardless of what uh, perhaps disruptions or changes happen throughout the course of a day. A work experience is something that is a huge um, benefit to be able to include on a resume. And that is something that um, experiential learning relates to. So looking at uh, co-op experiences, internships, volunteer opportunities, um, that can all kind of go under that work experience bracket. They're looking for individuals who can dress appropriately. So what you wear to work at a law office would be very different than what you'd wear to work at a daycare or a construction site. Knowing how to use social media wisely is incredibly important. I'm sure many of you have been able to talk to your students about the types of things that they're posting online. Um, we know that many employers will Google someone's name if they're bringing them in for an interview, um, just to see what types of things come up. So being aware as to what um, your social media is reflecting of you about the types of material that you're posting, the types of comments that are being made. So if you don't like your boss or you had a bad day at work, um, that's not a great thing to all of a sudden share online with a bunch of people, um, but also being aware of um, sometimes the flip side. So if you really love your job, but perhaps there's some fine print somewhere that says that you can't um, post about your job at work. We've heard many stories about that as well. Uh, the huge benefit that your students have is that there's a good chance that they are very familiar with social media. And that's something that can be very beneficial for companies that are just trying to navigate the waters of social media, how to use it for their company, et cetera. So that can be a huge um, gift that your student brings to a potential company. Health and safety is obviously something else that's important. And then also having the technical skills um, that are needed for each job. So as I mentioned, we do love to mention that high school and school in general is a perfect training ground for many of these skills. And you as educators naturally provide opportunities to develop these skills in ways that your students may or may not realize are helping them to prepare for being part of our future, part of our workforce one day. So the last resource that we'll discuss today is our experiential learning hub. So one way that students can work on developing these skills while still in school is by taking part in an experiential learning opportunity. So this may look like a co-op or OYAP placement or an internship, or it could be less formal and may involve just going on a field trip or having an employer in to deliver a presentation or building a birdhouse as a class. Um, there's a wide spectrum of opportunities for you to incorporate into your classroom, all with varying levels of commitment and prep work. So we've created a guide in hopes of making this easier for you. Um, so you can access our experiential learning hub on our website where you'll find um, our educators toolkit for experiential learning. Um, so in this toolkit, um, it kind of just gives an overview of what is experiential learning. Um, how can employers participate locally, um, gives you sort of the benefit to students, um, and some tips on how you can support um, students, whether they're in the classroom or in a co-op placement. Um, there's also some additional resources um, and specifically some handouts. So um, tip sheets on how students can prepare for guest speakers, for field trips, um, how they can do a nice self-assessment self um, when they're preparing for an experiential learning opportunity, seeing what their interests are. As well, there's some reflection activities. So whether it's for just a classroom activity or for those that have done um, a semester co-op, um, as well as a rubric for um, employers. If you don't have one for the employers that you work with, this is a great resource um, just to sort of get their feedback on what the student has learned and what skills they've developed through their placement. So as well on this page is our online matching system. Um, so if you're having difficulty finding a placement for one of your students or just simply looking for an employer to do a guest speaking, um, you can let us know by filling out this request form. Um, and we'll work to connect you or the student um, with a local employer. So 
all these different municipalities, um, various sectors um, for various opportunities. So whether they're semester long internships um, or just doing a tour of their facility, um, we can help to sort of facilitate that connection. Um, in addition, we have our test drive blog series. Um, and this is where we um, interview um, either current co-op students. Um, some of these are actually interns we've had in our office. Um, some of them are at uh, different employers. So we can do um, interviews with students before they start their placement, while they're at their placement um, with employers that um, have taken on a lot of students and have some advice for other employers or for professionals that are now working in a field because they did um, a high school or university co-op. So it's a great opportunity just to sort of give some students a perspective um, from someone who's done those. As well, there are um, additional guides um, for parents and employers um, just to help them learn about how these opportunities can help their children and their workforce. They are also available in French. Great, so that just about wraps up everything that we have. Uh, we know that we just shared a lot of information with you. And so if there's any remaining questions, we've been trying to keep an eye on questions as we've gone throughout. If there's any remaining questions that um, come to your mind, um, please feel free to send them now. We'll stick around here for a couple of minutes or you can send an email to us. We do have our contact information on the screen in front of you. As we close, we'd encourage you to take some time to dive a bit deeper into some of the resources that we shared with you. As you process what you see on the site and what you've heard today, feel free to reach out to us if there's any additional support that we can provide for you. As I mentioned before, a web recording of this webinar will be available for view in the next 24 hours. So if you want to do a lunch and learn with some of your colleagues, or if you want to share this with others that you know would be interested in it, then please feel free to do so. Additionally, we would appreciate it if you could complete a brief survey that will pop up when you um, close out of the webinar screen. Your response will help us as we prepare for future webinars. Uh, we do have a few extra webinars that are coming up throughout the month of April. And we do have one for parents that is happening next week. And then we'll also have one for students as well. So if you have a group of students that is a class that you think would be well suited to listen to a webinar, then we would encourage you to set that up for then. I'm just trying, sorry, I'm trying to open up the timing for it. Here we go. Just wanna make sure I'm giving you the right dates. All right, so the parent webinar is April 17th at 5 p.m. And then we have the student webinar a week later, April 24th, and that's at 10 a.m. So we did schedule that uh, throughout the day so that students and classes can take part in that. So feel free to share that throughout your school and uh, with the other teachers that you're with. All right, thank you so much for your time today. We really appreciate you spending this hour with us and we hope you have a great afternoon.